All right. Well, it's the Shoot It Straight podcast, summer edition, because we're finally in our summer garb. It finally broke like 40 degrees in Oklahoma. I'm very excited about it. It's been very nice. It's 70 and sunny and yes, you know, typical Oklahoma weather. Yeah, I know. That's what <laughs> it's. I know that that's not true. It's not true, <laughs> but it'll be nice and hot soon, but it's got to enjoy it while it's here. We definitely do. And we have been. It's been awesome to be out on the golf course. Lots of golf. I think I played four days in a row. You, this week, did you? Yeah, I played Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh my gosh, I didn't really think about that. Did I play I did Wednesday too? Uh, play Tuesday, like a little bit before I got kicked out funny. for women's league. Yeah, you were okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it has been so nice. Yeah, we and I just asked you about playing four days in a row because I was thinking we just they just wrapped up the Masters, and it blows my mind that these guys can play golf. Just in general, four days in a row is a lot. But like this particular, like the Masters was so crazy because they had to cram in between the crazy weather. It's fun to watch. Well, yesterday was fun to watch. So much fun to watch. That was so much fun to watch. I love watching golf. But yeah, they get out there and they they hoof it around. And I mean, they got to be tired. I'm I, I'm curious. Like you know, we talked about this this morning. Like, are they? What do you do today? I mean, I know a lot of them do get like back to work, get back in the gym. But I don't know. Yesterday was an exception. Like if you're John Rahm and you played, what well, they play a round and a half. They play. They started on the seventh hole, I think. So they played seventh all the way to 18. Then they got a couple hours break and came out and played all 18 again. Under that pressure, I'd be wiped. He's got to be spent. He's got to be spent, and he's a he's a dad. Like he's got two young kids. Like I'm sure they're settling in and going traveling back, just traveling back home, and at least taking a day to like decompress and celebrate. I would hope so. I would. But, I mean, so maybe too. they maybe he got right back to work. I don't know. I think it's but, like anything else. I'm sure all these athletes have their own rituals in their their own way. Like we've seen. I mean, the full swing, whatever on Netflix was kind of interesting. Just seeing the different personalities of athletes that are out there, and some are a little bit more casual again. Like, do we think, do I think John Rahm is a casual athlete? No, I'm sure he's out there grinding, which is why he's like the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. He's mm-hmm. really, really, really good. But yeah, I think any other, any, any other day they, they would get right back to work, but it would be an exceptionally long weekend and long yes. day yesterday. Yes. I'd have to think that they're taking it easy today, but we, we hope that for them. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I mean, maybe you'll, maybe they're, maybe they're back in the gym. I mean, yesterday we I played on Easter Sunday and then I, you know, I did a run yesterday morning, which I haven't, you know, I've slowly started been doing that plus golf. So right. for me, it's like I'm wiped on Monday. <laughs> like, like, yeah. I mean, I played four days in a row, but I never played, I never even played a full 18, 18 holes though. I played on um, Thursday. We had our men's league. That was nine holes and it's a scramble. So that's like a low key golf. Um, I played nine holes on Friday. I had a match play. Um, started doing match play at the club on Saturday. Um, so I won my match six and five. So I only had to play. You played twelve holes. I played thirteen holes. Oh okay, yeah. Um, because then you know, six and five meaning like I was up by six, only five holes left to yep. play. So the, the match was over. Um, which I played terribly. I should have. Honestly, I should have done better than that, but, um, and my partner wasn't having his, or my competitor wasn't having his best day either, but it was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah. And then yesterday we played on Easter, we played 15 holes, 15 holes. We couldn't make the turn cause we had to do some family obligations. And then yesterday turned into, <laughs> I mean, I know people that are listening all appreciate like holidays are sometimes like, <laughs> I used to, you know, I used to like holidays back in when you didn't have any responsibilities, but now they're just, they're truly a pain in the ass. And I honestly am in a season of no more holiday participating. Well, it's, it's, it's holidays when it's on, it's a beautiful day. You're playing golf and then there's also the masters on. So it's like, oh, you we know, wanted I, to do yesterday I, was play I golf just wanted to, just wanted to watch the masters. Yeah. And, yeah. and hang out and yeah. Um, we fun. tried to do a quick, you know, a little family visit and it was just kind of like road detours and trying to get some sonic <laughs> it was closed like there were just no things that was a bummer total first world problems wanted some diet cherry limeades just wanted like a uh, nice cold diet cherry limeade after playing all day maybe we'll get day. one after this okay maybe we will I'll try the app again <laughs> since moving to oklahoma i've added like four fast food apps to my phone <laughs> I well, they're all for treats. It's like actually not anything. It's not actual any like fast food. Like we don't get a burger. We go get no. and cherry limeades. And- no, we don't. We don't go do fast food or anything like that. We definitely cook a lot. Um, and we don't, I never, we don't Uber eats. We never order food like that ever. But like some of these apps are so funny and they give you like these really great 
point systems and deals that and we so when we go get our Andy custard i got a dairy queen app now because apparently they're doing 85 cent blizzards i'm so here for it i'm definitely wanting to go at least twice it's for like two weeks i mean they're basically just giving them away i mean <laughs> and we love to go out for ice cream and treats. ice cream is the best and cherry limeades and we love cherry limeades cody asked me yesterday, do we have another app he said oh, we were using them and we were using the masters app of course oh well, the masters app was so good we're all over the place right now with this podcast it's so funny the masters app was really really good that was awesome especially again we don't really have normal cable tv it's always so hard to watch sports it's so hard to watch golf sometimes too because mm -hmm. it's like four days and they have it on like nine different channels and they switch midday like it's all sorts of whatever but the app was like pretty consistent when they were playing the only thing that sucked, obviously, was like all day Saturday they like couldn't play, um, but the Masters app was awesome. It, it, everyone talks about the Masters app being like the greatest piece of technology ever created, and then oh, do they? And then well, yeah, it's it's kind of it's funny. Well, it, it is great, but then you know today it's everyone's talking about deleting it. For, I deleted my app for, today. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you so delete funny. it for uh, the year. I don't follow a lot of golf people, so I'm not <laughs> in like the social media world. That's really funny. Yeah. I did. I had a moment where I was like. Well, it says Masters 2023, so you, it's not like they'll have a new one for 2024, I'm sure. It'll be different. They're not just going to... Oh, I, oh, I never, I never thought about Masters that. Masters app live, live on your phone? I'm, I, I, I don't know. I got, I got a lot of apps on my phone that, no. that don't do anything yeah. or that I don't use. I'm sure they still do what they do, but... You got to do a, a cleanse. I like to keep things fresh, and I go through like monthly and make sure I'm like using things that are on my phone or whatever hmm. digital cleansing digital spring detox yeah i mean i do that periodically i guess like for things like all the scooter apps i had when living in the city yeah right i, guess I was like oh i don't need seven different types of scooter apps anymore <laughs> yeah like all these like weird things that it is it's so funny like uh, all the things and we've moved a lot so it's those things change on us quite a bit mm -hmm. quite frequently but yeah let's get diet cherry limeades after the podcast absolutely um, I've been wanting one since yesterday and midday about this time. So we deserve it. I'm sure there's one around here, but yeah, I think, I mean, you've been talking about your golf game. Like, how do you feel like you're playing? I, I mean, mm. I'll speak for you for a second. <laughs> I feel like you're not playing your best right now, but you've been playing a lot, which is weird. Cause usually when you play a lot, you're in like a, a good rhythm. <laughs> Every guy listening is like, God, wives are so annoying. I know. <laughs> like, I can say I'm not playing well, but you saying it to me is not, <laughs> doesn't feel as good. Um, <laughs> well, I think that you generally, like you come in and you shoot like low 80s, like pretty consistently, like without trying. When I give away my score, people, people listening might think I'm really good. Well, I no, I think it's important to talk about this. I think, it's, no. We, Let's remember Cody is, is a, is a fitness guy that plays golf let's also remember not a golfer that does fitness to be real with people and let's also remember that people inflate their golf scores all the time and i think that what i love about you and what i love about the way that you play golf and i don't give a fuck about my score and you know i don't play this way at all because i don't care but you are honest with your score you always keep score you always keep in integrity with your score like even if you're playing with me and we're like fucking around like you're always pretty consistent about like you're really good about keeping your score i think there's mm -hmm. a couple of times where you've like played so bad that you've been like fuck this or or if there's like something weird that happens where we need to skip a hole and pass people you've done like but you're always so yeah if, if something changes the game where like the score is no longer valid yeah um you'll what, like, like you especially like yourself. skipping a, like skipping a hole or something yeah. like that like i'm not now i'm no longer gonna like oh i'll give myself a par for that hole it's like no but you're you, so you, that, that's about not your score well like you know like yesterday i remember i what did I do? Oh, I, I pulled my drive off the tee and at the course we play at Meadowbrook um, has a lot of trees. And I mean, I hit my ball, it hit a tree. I don't know, probably only went a hundred yards and hit a tree and came straight down. And you were like, 12. Yeah, it was 12. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's barely in front of the forward tees and, and you're like, Oh, just hit another one. I'm like, no, I got to go figure out. I got to go play that one yeah. and, and yeah. figure out how to make a score out of this. You know, it's, it sucks. Yeah. So like, and because, you know, you want to keep your handicap, you know, we have the GIN system, like where you score and everyone else can see it. And I mean, if you're going to go play like a league like me, like, you know, I want to have my actual handicap because we are, I'm going to play against people who are, if they're also tracking their handicap correctly, we should be on the same level. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, the guy I played with the other day, he was, um, I had to give him three strokes, um, for the whole 18. Um, so 
But granted, he didn't get to use the last one because the, the match was over before that one. But how does that work? You do it every six holes. Or no, you, so um, he got a he got a stroke on the three hardest holes. Oh, so that it's okay. predetermined, like okay. which which three holes that's going to be in. And the more and like they have a list. Right. So it's like this hole is like the hardest. Oh, it's the, it says it on the scorecard. OK. Got it. Like you'll, you know, yeah. get they rank the holes and then you get strokes on each one of those holes. That's. Yeah. You know, depending on how many strokes you have to give someone. So if you had to give someone like all 18, they would get one on per hole. But if it was 17, the easiest hole, you wouldn't get a stroke on. Got it. Okay. We, we would play that one straight up. Yeah, I meant to ask you that the other day because I wasn't sure how that worked. Yeah, we, then we would play that one straight up. So, you know, we'll see what the – and then it's going so to change for every opponent. Like, I mean, I think I'm the – well, I'm in the B flight. So there's an A, B, and C flight. And there's a championship flight. So I'm in the B flight. Um, the championship's like guys that are like scratch golfers plus handicappers. And then I'm in the I'm the number one seed of the B flight. <clears throat> yeah. So um, the next guy I play, who knows? I mean, I, I, I he's gonna have a lower he's gonna have a higher handicap than me since I'm the number one seed. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to give no matter who I play in this, they're gonna get a couple strokes on me. Um, but it could only be like two strokes, or it could be like four. I don't or five. Or I don't know. So what do you think's going on with your game? Is it because Meadowbrook is pretty hard? Like, oh. It's a hard course. Though. Yeah. So I mean, what what what's what's kicking my ass at this course is that. Um, I'm I'm a bomber, right? Like I hit the ball far, so like I get away with. I love courses that are more open, where like I can bomb it, and like if I'm not behind a tree, like it's cool because, you know, I don't have to be as accurate, and like just because it's in the in the rough or something like that, like isn't really a problem for me. We, we end up both of us in the trees a lot. The trees are a problem, and you can't you can't <laughs> hit through that. You can't hit. You know, you got to man manufacture a shot around the trees, so it's a bummer. Um, because like the, you know, there's courses, especially here in Tulsa, like. La Fortune or South Lakes where South Lakes, especially like I can bomb it and I can miss right. And I'll just be in another fairway yeah, without yeah. trees. There's like nothing on that course. Yeah. I'll be in like another, I'll be in another fairway with a still a, a line a perfectly, you know, there's no trees. So like, well, there are trees, but there's, you know, chances are you're going to have a straight shot at the green without a tree in your way. And I'm just in a different fairway, but I'm still 320 yards down there. Yeah. And that's a pretty easy, that's no big deal. Um, and Meadowbrook, like you can just be right behind a tree and you're screwed. Um, no matter how far down you hit it, you're pitching out and now you're trying to save par or, or, or better or worse. I mean, so that's, that's been a tr struggle for me is like, I've got to get my driver straight. Cause I live and die by my driver. It's the best part of my game. Cause you know, I'm all about lifting heavy and swinging fast. So hitting the ball far is, is, is how I score. Um, I don't, you know, I don't make long putts. Typically I don't get up and down all the time so hitting the ball far and having a wedge into the green is is how i is how i play the game i would love for there to be less trees on the meadowbrook off course <laughs> they, i mean there's some ones that have, they've cut down that are fresh i need to learn how to hit straighter too i've been doing a little bit better yesterday i felt like i had some more straight ones you did than normal you did i'm working on really rotating in my hips like fast well i think you uh, well i think a couple things you, you got to work on your actual swing i probably i think it's it's your club path and then, you know, definitely where oh, I love that we're on the podcast. You can't yell at me for telling you what to do. Ha -ha. I am going to yell at you. You told me that I didn't have a club path problem. Literally, you said that the other day. Do you recall? When did I say that? When I was putting my club down because I said, do you have sticks in your bag? And you said, you don't have a club path problem. Oh, you, well, you so that. then it's the face will be open or closed or um, well, that's not. Club well, path. you also have a ball s position. You put like every single sh ball every time you hit the balls like way up on your front foot. Like even if you're hitting like your wedge, you're like your balls like way up on your front foot, and you they should be more towards the back of your stance. Yeah, and it's funny because it's like every time somebody looks at my golf swing, someone says something different. Oh yeah, you'll you'll hear that forever. But I don't know. I mean, you definitely have a path problem because your ball slices. Yeah, but it's getting better, and I'm correcting it myself. I know you're doing good. You're doing better. You're, you're trying hard. I am trying hard. The, the position, though, so the, that's what I want hard. you to do because you hit a lot of shots fat, and I don't think they would be necessarily be as fat if you put the ball in the correct position to start with because if you keep putting it all the way at the very front and you're, like, hitting, like, a wedge or an 8-iron or a 9-iron, you got it, like, off your front foot, you're going to hit the ground. Yeah. And not the ball. Yeah. But if you just move the ball back. Yeah. But, again, I'm not a swing coach, so I don't know. But um, my game, yeah, that, that's, you know, and, yeah, it's just the trees are – it is a – it's not a long course. Um, and if you can hit a good drive and be in the fairway, then, you know, it's, it's the not being in the fairway in this course is, is a, is, is a punishment. And like a lot of courses, it's not, you can kind of get away with it. You no, know we should do is go to another golf course in like a month or so, just to, just to 
go play. See where we're see at. How things oh, I definitely want to go to the golf courses because I, I like golf, well, yeah. I like golf courses. So I know, but it's um, something we should probably actually plan for because it's so easy to just hop across the street and go to the club that we belong to, which is fun, which is great. Yeah, I, I mean, like, like, I, like for I, me I, to learn, it's actually nice to have consistency. It's mm-hmm. that's helpful. Yeah, because it can help you like dial in like what clubs to hit and things like that. Well, yeah, not well, and, uh, yes, I, uh, kind of. And how the I don't greens know if I'm quite go there and where the it's, greens. It's just less things to think about. Like when when you're still learning the game, which I will be forever. But like you know, when you're, it's just oh, I know this whole like okay, like I at least know what I do here, or whatever. Like it just takes one less thing mm-hmm. away, which is well, nice. there's because if you don't know the course, there's there's like some blind shots and yeah. You know, you don't know exactly like what happens if you hit the ball over there. Like it's nice to know. Totally. That and well, what what is good about our course though is you don't lose your ball a lot. Like there's no, not I there's not water everywhere. Balls. There's not no. out of bounds. That's like nice. so, I mean, that's what. Like if 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 it was out of bounds and how tight the fairways are, I'd, I'd be. T- I would have to put away my driver. I'd have to try to hit my irons out there because it would just be such a punishment. Yeah, that's to, to miss on because there's only like really like one or two holes where you can hit the ball out of bounds. And be in trouble. 12. 12. And 11, you can too, if you really miss it. That's about it. Yeah. It's not too um, oh, I, two if you Two if you hit it left. But I don't I don't go left. I go right. My miss is right. Oh, yeah, two. <laughs> but you, can, two. You, can, you can put that one out into the street. Um, <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, so, but, you know, if um, it, it is fun to learn how to hit, because you got to learn how to hit some low shots. You got to get underneath some trees. If you want to, if you only have like one tree to get through, like you try to hit it low and chase it up to the fair and up to the green or something like that. But there's a lot of times where you got more than one tree in front of you and it's a problem. <laughs> you just have to take your medicine and try to put it back out and play instead of hitting and hitting a tree and then hitting another tree. And then you're in a really bad shape. It's just so frustrating every time. Even yeah. when you don't care what your score is, it's really just, an, it's just very annoying, actually. Just mm-hmm. super annoying. Especially when they come right back at you. Oh my God. Like the feedback and it's loud and it's everything about it is like so obnoxious. It's like tree smack, loud smack, bounce backwards. It's like, <laughs> yeah, especially with that guy yesterday. I mean, you remember that where we ran into those guys, they well, were coming we were up a different hole. Trees. We were all in the trees and yeah. different holes. We were all in of us. Clusterfuck of trees. There's like six of us over in these trees. And hard ground, like mm-hmm. at the bottom of the fucking pit of this tree area. Yep. And what <laughs> yeah. amazes me, like, so these guys are playing the other hole, which is the hardest. They're playing 16, 16. and we were playing um, 13. 13. And you know, we're going down one way, they're going the other. And um, 16 is a long hole. And that guy had, I mean, he probably only drove it like 220 and he probably had another 220 or more to get there. And it always blows my mind, like people that drive at 220 and then they think they're going to hit their three wood like over 220 all of a sudden. And off this lie, it's not on a tee, it's on like dirt. And you've got to guide it through a tree or something like you just think that you're going to miraculously crush this three wood further than your driver that you had on a in a perfect setting a few minutes ago. Like, no, sir. no. And he, of course, he smoked it right into a tree and it came back at us. Everyone thought that they were going to be hit with the golf bullet. Yeah. And that happens all the time. It's, it, you know, it's, it's crazy people that do that. But, you know, it's golf. It's what it's what it's what we do. I mean, maybe he hit a really maybe hit like the worst drive of his life and he can and he's a lot better player than that. But it didn't didn't look like it. But I don't golf. So I so that's like what my biggest struggle is. I mean, granted, like you know, when you don't play in a, for a while, like your short game is is tough. Like getting yeah. your feel back, um, you know, especially like fifty yard shots, sixty yard shots, things like that to hold the green because you know you're just you know, and if your um, impact isn't or your contact isn't consistent, like you catch one perfectly, and all of a sudden it goes eighty yards, or you're used to catching them a little heavy, and they're going fifty yards, and so you play for that fifty yards, and but you flush it and it goes 80 and well that literally happens to me all the time for all my irons yeah so you know it's, it's still early in the year for me but i mean it, um i don't know we'll see if i we got this match play that i'm kind of hoping i win i know the competitions have been fun are you going to men's league this week mm-hmm. yeah that'll be fun men's league's a little more fun i think because you're you're paired up like we played a scramble last week this week is called a uh, chapman which is an interesting game um i've actually never played i, I just read the rules so um We'll Best to talk of luck about. to you. <laughs> yeah, it's like something where you play, you have to play each other's, t- so like you you both tee off and you have to play each other's shots after that. What? Yeah. And then, and I could be wrong, so maybe there's someone out there that will correct me, but you each hit your own drive 
you then you hit from the other person's drive. Then after that, you pick the best shot that got up to the green or, or whatever, the, the, the approach that was better. But then, it's so like if I hit an approach up to the green that was better, then my partner would get, have to play that next shot because it would be his turn because it would be my shot. So it would be his turn now. And then we'd have to finish out the hole alternating. What's, so you guys are a team. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm here for that. That's fun. Yeah. So it's like best ball... No, not really. It's really just different. It's interesting. I mean, I've never yeah. played it. I could, I could be mistaken, but that's how that's I interpreted cool. the, I'm here the that. rules that I read. That so is really cool. It could be and fun. You don't get to pick your partner. You just get, you're going to just get. You, yeah, you can pick partners, yeah. um, but I don't know. You know, I'm new yeah. and I don't know anyone. And, and I want to like meet different people. So like. Just let them pick for you. Yeah. And like, I mean, yeah. I guess I could like, you know, there's a guy that I've got paired up with last week. He was cool. And so were the people the week before. So like, I guess in theory, like, yeah, I could be like, hey, hey, Bill, like. <laughs> This and the guy's name was Bill. Bill yeah. yeah. And uh, I'd be like, hey, Bill, you want to like be on my team this week? And like, he'd probably say yes. But I mean, like, I, I want to meet people. So like, I'm, I'm cool with like the, the randomness. That'll be fun. Yeah, it's fun. And like, we had our Easter, br our Easter brunch there. Like, I mean, the, the country club life is fun. It is good. The brunch was really good. It was chicken and waffles. That was a bomb. I'm here for like a good, I do like having a big meal before golf. We talked about our meals before golf and it really now we went a little indulgy dulge well you did for sure as far as like <laughs> of course like I did. waffles and syrup like things like that can get a little heavy mm -hmm. i don't quite like want to go that heavy right before a round but i like to eat a good amount of food that i mean i played my best front nine there so full like almost uncomfortably full so i don't know it's just and nice then... to not be <laughs> squat was banned one week from the podcast perhaps he should be banned another week from the podcast you're fired buddy well the other part of this podcast we were going to talk about i think since we might as well just pivot is exercises that need to leave the gym <laughs> things right. exercises that we don't think golfers should do or maybe anyone should do we're just going to keep it kind of casual but i want to i wanted to talk about that with you because it's kind of fun to talk it's been fun we've talked about being in the globo gym space and watching people work out but we both also like have done workouts ourselves and done plenty of group x workouts where we do like kind of goofy movements mm -hmm. i also just got a meme uh, cat always sends me shout out to cat and the things that she sends me in my dms on a regular basis we entertain each other all day every day and she sent me this one stupid video i mean it's kind of had to be their moment but it was basically just like a tr it's like trainers make up uh, trainers be making up exercises like every day at the gym which trainers actually kind of no, no offense but there's some weird weird trainer moves out there where you're just like what are they having this client do some weird combination of standing on a bozu ball, like doing a row, hopping, jumping, mm -hmm. like, spinning around. Like who knows like what's going on in the like fitness world these days. But I had a moment of that last week, but uh, myself. Yourself? Yeah, out in our garage. Uh, giving a movement? Uh huh. To a client? Yeah. Did you make something up? We were we were we were collaborating and making shit up. You and I? No, me and Parker. Oh. My client out in the garage. Why? Well, because I just got the downshift board. Oh, you were making up moves with your downshift board. And we were trying to like, and you know, and he's actually a much, he's a much better golfer than I am. Um, and he understands the swing much more than I do. And, but I understand the body more. So we were collaborating on ways to use this board, shift weight, and use like the golf forever, like um, stick and bands and trying to get it into how many toys can we use in one movie put like i have a rule i, I have a rule like i really try to avoid using more than like no more than two like, i feel like that's that, even ridiculous well if you're using a band and something to stand on like that's okay um you know you the, the strap the, the golf well the, the golf forever and the band itself is one that's it, two it, no it's one it's connected um i'm calling it one and then the downshift board but the downshift board is like not made for the gym he made that for to take to, out to take out and yeah. hit like yeah practice shots you know um yeah. so um that's funny yeah well anyway i mean yeah i mean but that's the only time i've ever really like that i can think of that i've been like actively like I, you know you sometimes you have to modify something like a lot for somebody to do it for you sure. know like really got to get creative for, for sure. them to get into a position that you want them to be in but it's still like the same um movement you know, like and that's why you Whatever. can't judge too much, even like a trainer at the gym. Like I, I, you know, you laugh and then you're like, well, God, like, I don't know what that client's history is. I don't know what they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what they're doing. They right. might be doing something that that woman 
Like that's what she can do. So that's yeah. what. She, and so I, mean, I had a client years ago that we he had the you know we came up with this like super weird looking deadlift for him. Yeah. You know, just because he couldn't get in this traditional deadlift, sumo was really weird for him, and so he ended up in this like kind of hybrid deadlift situation that you know fr from my point of view and everything he felt about it and the weight he was pulling and how good he felt afterwards was effective yep um but but nothing like what i was doing the other day like in the garage where i was like literally like hey we're we're just gonna mess around and see if see if this works well yeah. that's funny i think i don't think you were you told me about that so it's funny that that, that came up that yeah. you literally recently invented a move we'll have to see it on we'll your see. coming to your instagrams oh soon. it is well I, and i and i and i'm in communication with um um downshift and and we we're ta i was talking to him about it and um, you're like is it okay that i do this really ridiculous move on your surfboard it's, it's a, a it's a surfboard okay um it is it's a downshift board it, it changes your weight but anyways um no i told him i was like yeah i was like i'll send you some videos of stuff i'm messing around with that's cool yeah i'm sure he, he was he was he was there for it yeah. yeah i mean that's like you know it's not like there's not those are rules. There aren't yeah. any rules. I think so. I think that's an important thing to say before we get into this conversation of movements that we think should either die or that are just pointless, but that are okay. Is that there aren't rules? Any movement goes. Obviously, it's cool if the the movement is being done for fun. A lot of the movements that are done out there are really just going to be some form of cardio. I'm sure we'll talk about that. But like, there aren't really rules. Right. I think there's just certain movements where we believe that you should be doing most of the bang for your buck exercises out there versus the ones that are just a waste of time. Most right. people don't have all day to train. So therefore they should probably do things that they can do 30 minutes in and out, whatever. Um, so you go first, maybe your move is the one that you think isn't that good, but what is, oh. what is a movement that you feel like is not either just no bueno or specific to golf shouldn't do it. So I'll start with the easier one for me, the specific to golf. Um, so I would really kind of err on the side of caution if you're going to, and these are great exercises on their own. If you're really good at them are Olympic weight lifts. So like we're talking, there's only two Olympic weight lifts. There's the snatch and the clean and jerk. Um, one of my clients wrote me, he said, he listened to a podcast and someone said that you should, shouldn't do Olympic weight lifts. It was a, it was a golf fitness coach. Um, and you shouldn't do the clean deadlift. And I think they were just confused. Um, mm. calling something a clean, I mean, there is a clean deadlift, There is, um, but I don't think that's what they were actually referring to. I think they were talking about the full clean. Um, so anyways, but you should deadlift, you should squat. There's only two movements in Olympic weightlifting. They are the snatch and the clean and jerk. Um, and they just take too much skill. They are just, most people need maybe, de I'd say, let's just say decades of practice to do those well enough to um, get the power and, and force created to make them efficient for you to actually put into your training. Um, so, you know, uh, there are some golf fitness guys out there that, that talk about doing them. Um, but your general, your normal person doesn't need to do them. You know, it's funny cause I messaged you the other week about my, tr I was doing like a program with some what did it have in it? Snatches or something. And I sent you a screenshot of it. And I was like, I'm going to do all this except the snatches. And you wrote me back and you were like, actually, cause we were about to play around a golf and I didn't want to like fuck up my mm -hmm. shit. Cause sometimes I do that. Mostly it's cause I go too hard. Right. And then I'm like, Oh, intensity level 9,000. And right. I'm trying to play golf today. F. But you were like, actually the snatch is the only movement that you should be doing or whatever. And I'm like, God damn it. I still don't get this shit right. I'm so yeah. dumb. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> so, but you're different, right? Like you know how to do them. I mean, not that well, most, but like, yes, I, I know them well enough to, to understand that your point was to get the stimulus of like the explosive power right. that is the golf swing. Like it's totally makes sense. So mm -hmm. when you said that, I was like, God damn it. That he's right. Like that's, I'm stu like, literally I'm stupid. I think I ended up doing, I don't like snatches are really, really hard. And I don't like snatching on those platforms in lifetime just cause there's just, you're in like a little confined kind of box. Oh, really? I just, I don't, I can do it, but I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. I don't feel like it's big enough. I just yeah. feel like if you, if you have like a miss or something, it's just crowded in there. Like I'm not good. I'm not good enough or confident enough to be like, I, what if I dropped a barbell behind me and there was somebody behind me? It's just tight right. in there sometimes. But you've been doing snatches like pretty consistently for like six years for a while yeah yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. I mean, I or can longer run. than that. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. when did you first? I mean, barbell snatches were are newer to you, but you were doing dumbbell snatches. Long time. Long time ago, long right? Time ago. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's different for you. I, I mean, there's people that you know send me their videos of of their workouts, and I see videos of of things they're doing, like they struggle with, with, with a squat or they struggle right. with a deadlift or, yeah. so you're going to tell me like this person that doesn't know how to deadlift correctly needs to now grab the bar wider for a snatch and now do an explosive type of deadlift hinge, triple extension, hit their hips and catch it over their head yeah, no with way. their, no with way. their shoulder mobility. No way. And most people's shoulder mobility, they're, they're not gonna be able to get into a good overhead position for a snatch and they're, or to catch a barbell on the front rack for a, for a clean and then, and then jerk it up over their head. Like, no, most people can't do that. So alternatively, in terms of, in the spirit of being productive, would you say a good alternative for an Olympic lift could be maybe like learning the kettlebell swing? Is Mm -hmm. that probably a really good, I think that's a really good one. That's still, Uh still, I feel like it's really hard for people. It's it's a simple exercise, but it's hard. It and, but it's still the same idea of like that explosive power hip drive. Yeah, a l- good extension, yeah. hip drive, um, core. Um, and it's not, yes, it is technical. Like if, if you go, people do those wrong too, but like it, if you go pick up a kettlebell and just start swinging it, like. You're probably not going to hurt yourself. Probably not. Um, and, and people, you'll learn it faster. Like, I mean, I still like, I have videos of me doing Olympic weightlifts like this year. And I did them a lot and I'm still not very good. I'm, I'm feeling you. On um, that. I feel that too. So it's some days are better so, than others, but and I did one and I did them recently at lifetime just because I wanted to, just cause I wanted to. And I'm, it's just, I'm not good. I'm not good at it. It's em. hard. It's really, no, <laughs> it's, it, I know. I think that's super important that for yeah. you to say that. I think, um, Olympic lifting is very, very technical, much right. like the game of golf. If you think about it, like those people are putting that much time as like a, amateur professional Mm -hmm. golfer and like being a really good lifter you know Um, well it's it's also like um if you ever get the if you ever use like this the overspeed sticks we've talked about these recently like if you don't use the ground correctly like you can get exponent you can get a certain amount of speed out of like without using the ground correctly and then it the plateau plateaus really fast yeah so like olympic weightlifting like i can get away with i just don't know how to seek i just don't do it perfectly so like I can do a certain amount of rate weight really well. Like I can barbell cycle, like, you know, like in CrossFit, like I can go, for, I can do like the, the hang power clean, like quick or whatever, and like drop it down to my hips and pop it back up. Like to a certain weight, I can do that really fast. Like I can cycle it well, but then if it's like, okay, let's get up and do, you know, some heavy cleans, I lose it. Yeah. Cause it's my, my technique, the flaws of my technique show. hundred percent. So same thing in the swing. Same exact thing as golf. Yeah. Like same you can get away, you can get away with X amount and then you're, and then as soon as, yeah, as soon as you start, um, there's just a, a ceiling and then you have to fix your technique to get to that next level. That's right. That's right. I love that. So yeah. So yeah, th- there's only two, the, the clean and jerk. And like, that's with the barbell. Like I probably, I don't like people like clean people that clean dumbbells usually just end up curling them. Um, so, but I I'm, I'm down for some dumbbell snatches though. Oh, so God, I'll, I so I, so I could do a dumbbell. Sna- I'm cool with the dumbbell snatch dumbbell thruster which is not a clean and jerk it's a thruster um those 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 i'm I'm cool with um it's it's the barbells and then yeah i just really don't like because you have to tell someone to get like really heavy dumbbells yes to make the clean actually a clean or else they just curl them they do and And i've seen that that years i've seen that a lot yes yeah people aren't grabbing the weights heavy enough for them for sure for sure i love that um, I don't have, I'm not going to, is it your turn? I'm not, yeah. And I'm not going to speak to golf specific ones. I'm not the golf trainer here, but I do want to, um, but you are the trainer. You are I need trainer. to highlight the, the, I don't know what, what to even call these and I'm speaking generally, but they're more of the not compound lifts, but like compound movements need to die. So I have one set of dumbbells. I'm going to squat with them. I'm then I'm going to curl them and then I'm going to step back and lunge with them. And then I'm going to barbell or then I'm going to hammer curl them and then I'm going to put them over my head, whatever, like the combination. I'm, I'm glad of like, you said this one. Okay. I like this one. It's, it's still a thing. And I, I, and I, and the reason I get so like, ah, about it is because like, holy shit. I remember these workouts were in like Cosmo magazine or whatever, 25 years ago or 20 years ago. And they're still at the gym. Like you, and you see guys and girls, this is like, Oh, I will say like, I think women are more biased to workouts like this again. Cause it's more like, here's like a 10 pound dumbbells that we always pick up 10, 15 pound dumbbells. 
And here's the 98 things that you can do with this one set of dumbbells. But I see guys at the gym that doing this stuff too. So it goes both ways. And it's like, dude, this is the, this is the least effective way for you to be doing any of those movements. If you're just using one set of light dumbbells to do your lower body and the same set of dumbbells to do an upper body movement, like doing a lunge with a bicep curl is that ain't it. That ain't it. That's mm-hmm. not, that's literally effective for nothing. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what the hell that the fuck it, that is other than you're really good at lunging with dumbbells right. in your hands and doing a bicep curl. Seriously. I know. And whatever other combinations, there's so many out there, right? Whether it's, I'm do, well, I'm going to do a thruster to an overhead and then I'm going to tricep extend it. And then I'm, it's like, what in the fucking hell are we doing? Mm-hmm. And the reason that these things are not effective, which may not be obvious, is the fact that you can't get better or stronger at one of those movements by com- by combining them and using one set of weights. Right. And also, typically, they're pretty high repetition movements. So you're... Do- you know, you see people doing them either for time, like you do, like do them for a minute or 45 seconds or do 12 lunges up and back with the same set of weights. And it's just like, you're not getting better. It's very unfocused and you're throwing spaghetti at, at the wall and mm-hmm. you're not getting anywhere. Right. Cause you're always just going to be limited by what the weakest muscle can do. That's right. That's so exactly you have right. to, you have to base your weight selection and then the overall fatigue and stimulus is going to come from the weak, the weak part. Yeah, you're like, oh, man, my arms are getting so tired, when, and you're lun- but you're lunging. Right. <laughs> so you should probably go grab 50-pound dumbbells and go lunge. And that's what's always tough with, um, like, telling someone to do, like, a goblet squat or even, like, a shoulder double yeah. squat, right? Because, like, that's why, I mean, you know, there's some people like, oh, I can't, I can't use the barbell for whatever reason they say. But it's like, you know, you're really limiting your legs because your, your determining factor is going to be how much can your arms hold. Right. Like, how, how much, how, like... Like, for example, like, uh, let, let me just brag real quick. Like, I can do this morning, I did five by fives with uh, 235 for front squats. And there's no way I can I can grab 220 pound dumbbells or 115 so pound dumbbells and put them up on my shoulders okay. and do front squats. It just doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, <laughs> so, like, yeah, you're you're always going to be limited by the the factor. And, like, I mean, I still see people doing the the squat to curl to press. I think that was in NASM. I think that was in their 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 handbook. It probably, I wonder if it like still is. We should open up some of these. Like, I, I bet you they haven't changed. That I, can't many remember, I, can't remember, I can't remember who's who I, I gave away all those books to people, but yeah, like the squat, curl to press, the, um, you know, l- like split squat, uh, lateral raise. Yes. Oh my um, gosh. Yes. What else? And then, I mean, there, there's some, there's some golf, golfy movements that they kind of do that stuff. Like they add in, like, you know, if I'm going to do, oh, I can't even think of it off the top of my head, but. Yeah, if I'm gonna do this like lower body rotation movement and then like a band like press or something, it's like, well, now I'm just kind of putting two things together when maybe I could just do a hip mobility exercise if I'm really trying to open up my hips um, and then get a heavier band or get in a different position to do like this banded press. Um, I don't know. I just came up with that off the top of my head, but but you would isolate the two movements. Yeah, you're just, I, you're taking two isolated movements and watering both of them down. Yes, big time, big time. Yeah, that's right. mine. So that's kind of like many movements, but that's my category of quote unquote exercises that I think need to die. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other ones? I got a couple. Um, I really, you, if, if you follow my programs, um, I can't believe no one has asked me this yet because this tool is very popular in golf fitness is the Bozu ball. (sighs) Um, let's deflate them all that I don't use. Um, (laughs) So, but a lot of people do, I mean, and, and I don't want to sit here and like knock like other people, like they, they, it may work for them. I just don't, I don't find value in in the, in the squishy, you know, ball and like people like, well, it'll help your balance. I'm like, I don't know. I don't think so. And I think they, they, they've done studies that show like it doesn't help your balance. Um, because yeah, I think like what our, what our brain is, is trying to do, our our brain does try to find balance. So if it's on like a squishy surface, our, our brain is smart. So it's like, where would I actually find balance on the squishy surface? Balance would be to get off of this squishy surface, right? Like this actually isn't training you to do anything. Yeah. Um, you don't play golf on a squish. I mean, actually the course was pretty soft the other day because of all the rain, but <laughs> not like a Bozu not ball, right? Easy. And, and it, you know, and so for the, for the balance aspect, I don't really, I think there's still some research out there on that, but they're, the things I've read so it show that it didn't help people's balance when they like um, put them through trials and things like that. Um, and then it definitely does not help you create more power for sure um, and strength. Like you will not to, to go back to your point. Like, so it kind of is like the, um, 
the, doing the bicep curl in, into the squat, which people do on the BOSU ball too. Um, but if you're standing on that BOSU ball, like there's no way you're going to, and, and I think they actually advertise them that you're not supposed to add weight to the BOSU ball. Like it's all for like supposed to be like body weight movements anyways. And you're not supposed to stand on the flat part of it. It's only supposed to be um, the bubble up yes. and you stand on that. You're actually yes. not supposed, it even says on the ball, like do not stand yes. on this because they didn't create it that way. It's not what it's designed to do, but people do that. Um, but anyways, you just won't create strength and you can't load it because like you're fighting to stay on this damn ball. So there's no way you're going to actually get your max load on there. And then your feet are going all sorts of different ways. Right. Like it's just, it's, it's funky. Um, and actually, you know, when we lived in DC, maybe before we were together, I think it was because I went to a fitness convention out in Reston. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think we had been together then, but, um, and I took a BOSU ball class. Your life existed before me. Yes, it did. Oh. Uh, but anyways, you so, <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, so you had, you, you oh, went, I remember. I you know. went to one of these conventions, yeah. right? Did, did um, you get some points, some CEC credits? Yeah. You got, you got the credits, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So you had to attend X amount of these things and you actually got some credits. Um, and so there was all these classes you could take and they just happened to be like the one during my time that I was there. Cause I, we also had a, my company had a, um, a little table set yeah. up and I was like working the table too. So, um, but when I got my break, you had to go take one of these classes and that was the only one like available, I think. Cause like I'm a, I was a procrastinator then. So I think that was the only one available that still had openings in it, which should tell you enough right there. Um, that all the other ones were full. Yep. <laughs> so like the both, so you could still jump in there and, and I mean, I took like a full, like 45 minute, like group exercise class on that BOSU ball and it totally kicked my ass. It was hard as hell. Um, but just because something's hard doesn't mean it's effective. Right. It was just, did I, did I leave better? No, I left tired. Right. And that circles back to what I said before is like, okay, cool. When it, when all is said and done, if you had a good, good sweaty quote unquote, all whatever fiery workout and you were tired. Yeah. Cool. I could like jump up and down with a Bozu fucking thing in my hand and it would be exhausting for right. like five minutes. I'm sure that's what you did or burpees on there and like jumped all around it and jumped on it and jumped over it. Like, mm -hmm cool like well, that's it at the end of the day you're just kind of you're getting your heart rate up for 45 minutes it's not that sexy yeah and i and i think it, it's um one of those things if you go to a big box gym right like one thing that as a trainer that you're kind of under the pressure of by your client which it takes years of experience to kind of get away from this and be the one who's going to stand up to your client and tell them what they need not what they want but they want something that's they they, they find value in something being very challenging yeah. So if it's like, Hey, I, you know, we let's do a bicep curl. Cause I want your biceps to be stronger, whatever. Um, right. But I want it, that's do that's easy. And your and your client, your paying client, especially if you're at, the, at, 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 a, at a big gym, like a, a luxury gym, they're paying like 150 bucks an hour. Right. So they don't want easy. That's not valuable to them. So it's like, okay, let's do this bicep curl, but you're going to stand on a BOSU ball. And they're like, oh my God, this is so fucking hard. And they're like, yeah. And then you know, like the trainers are like rubbing his hands together. Like, oh yeah, they're, they're working now. They're going to see why they pay me that 150 bucks. Cause they can't do this. They, this right. is so hard. They can't right. do it. They need me. Yes. Right. Like that's, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, for, I, I've been in that business for a long time. And I think that's why, cause you need to make sure they have a perceived value of what you're oh, providing 100%, or just that you're being creative. Yeah. Not doing the same. Cause God forbid, Oh my God, we're squatting again. It's been three years. I've been squatting, you know, like, which is what we want our clients to do basically. That's what, that's <laughs> I, what like, I want my clients to do. Keep going. Yeah. It's still hard, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but it still like, hurts. Yep. Yeah. No, we actually don't really need to introduce like a bunch of toys into this specifically. Yeah. And again, this isn't like shitting on the Bozu ball. I don't, I don't actually don't know specifically what types of exercises they made it for i don't i literally don't know mm -hmm. um but it it's been over it's overdone it's it's yeah. crazy how many people are still jumping on that thing and doing curls i mean the guy in the middle of like 400 other people by the free weights doing his bozu ball bicep curls it's just like okay you keep doing you like yeah. good, good for you i hope you don't fall on top of everybody that's right, right over here like that's so unsafe <laughs> <laughs> because there's many other ways you can train balance that are better. Yes. It's like that, that's, that's just my point. Like there, things can be done better. Things you can, there, be, you can better. be, you can train balance. That's more effective. That'll carry over into actual balance in human life. Um, if, which is the main focus of that thing. And then if you're trying to add strength, it's, it's worse than adding strength by just standing on the floor. Totally. So it, it just, there's just better ways for things to be done. Agree. 
Not by just checking the box of, oh, that was harder because I stood on this wobbly fucking blue ball. Anyways. The last one. I have one more that I want to say. I, I got a couple more, so let's keep Let's. This is fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mine will be like, this one's quick and dirty. Mine is, um again, not as a specific exercise, but team no short range of motion push-ups and pull-ups mm. because, oh, my God. Oh my God. Like you're only cheating yourself if you're doing a half ass rep or honestly, I saw this guy today. And again, I need to be specific with what I'm saying here. Bodybuilders have their own way of training. Right. And like, again, like certain clients might have contraindications and injuries, but my God, the guy doing a one inch tricep extension with the mm -hmm. cables for 78 reps, like I'm serious, like was just pumping it. I've seen that guy. What are we doing? I don't know. What are we doing? And why aren't we trained? Tra he looked like he was pretty capable of moving his elbow joint for throughout the yeah. full range of motion. I'm pretty sure. But if, but anyway, more specifically is the team shitty push-ups and team the, the pull-ups. The, the pull-ups get me. Can we please fully extend at the bottom? And can we please get our chin over the bar? And can we please stop doing these little half-ass shitty reps? And it's men, by the way, because women aren't getting up there like doing a lot of pull-ups, which is fine. Mm -hmm. If you if you see a woman doing pull-ups, they're doing them really well, by the way. I'm going to stick up for all the women. Even if you're training with banded ones or on the like whatever the fuck thing that assists you, the assisted pull-up machine. They're probably doing full range. They're going to the bottom. Like they're, mm -hmm. and, but if you see these dudes well, that are getting up there and they're, and they're like mm -hmm. squirming all around, I'm like, God damn it. They do half bench presses. Yeah. yeah they half, do half squats. We're not and, and it's men. Like maybe men. Uh, this could be a whole po topic, right? Yeah, why we why might men? Have to podcast this one. Yeah. We'll do this different. Cause I think women and, um, I think women, well, one, they're a little bit smarter, um, and they don't have as much ego. Um, but I think probably because the gym is so like this, like masculine, like place, I think women probably research it a little bit better before they go in and yeah. know what they're doing. Yeah. And they also know how to do things correctly. Yes. Instead of the dudes like, Oh, I was just show up and I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. You know, do what I like, what I want and just move a bunch of weights around yeah. where women are like, Hey, like I, I want to do these pull-ups. I'm going to do them right. And if yeah. I'm not, I'm going to go over to that machine. I'm doing, I'm going to do them like this. Yes. I'm going to do my squats like this. I don't care if there's only five pounds on the bar. Yes. And then. You and know. their form is like and their form's like great. pretty beautiful. Yeah, it's usually yeah. yeah the women like usually have like great form. And I'm probably like I probably look like a creepy guy sometimes. I'm like, oh, that's a good looking squat. I know, but they, they there's but you see, I can attest to that too. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, there's another girl like actually squatting below parallel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there's another guy moving three inches, putting three plates on both sides. Good for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good for you. But yep. it, yeah, it's it's wild and it's like funky stuff. Just it's just back to our uh, what we talked about when we were on the intention podcast is just remember like your intention like you're you're not going to get much better if you're not going to do the movement correctly like at the end of the day like what are you doing it for you're you're just kind of shorting yourself you're not shorting anybody else nobody else is gaining or losing right. in the gym and nobody really cares nobody gives a fuck what you're doing in the gym mm -hmm. just do it the right way right do it the right way you're going to get so much more benefit from that doing one really good pull up seriously is so much better than like six terrible squirmy ones right so that's my other one that's it those were my like that was my two but what else do you have um well what well, is really class so a common trend in the golf fitness space is taking crossfit workouts and maybe swapping a movement out maybe not like if you take like a um like an amrap or a metcon or something like that Okay, let's just um, high level. AMRAP as many rounds as many or rounds as many reps or as reps as possible. possible. Metcon is like metabolic conditioning, which is typically let's just call it a short workout. Yeah. On you know ten yeah. ten minutes max, could be less, where you're kind of an all out effort. It's right. hard. They're and correct and hard, uh, like short, let me, like I'll workouts. be straight up like I, I I do some of these in my program like like yeah. on Saturdays I have conditioning days and I'll throw some metcons in there. Yeah. But that's not the the that's like the very like that's one part of a workout in one on one day like that's two percent of what i program right um and there's a lot of programming out there that's just like they're just spinning they're just taking crossfit maybe changing the movement out of it and all of a sudden calling it golf fitness so why like, is that getting applied if, to golf i'm i'm confused i think it comes that. back to like you know again like they're hard like it, it's gonna make you sweat it's challenging like because it pushes you it's high intensity so people see there's a perceived value 
and like in golf fitness, right? Like if you think about what makes you a better golfer, it's just making your body better. So like if you are out of shape and a workout, almost right. any workout out there is going to get you in better shape. Yeah. And if you practice, you're going to get better at golf. Right. Like it's really not rocket science. Um, it's the whole like diets work until they don't thing. Yeah. Like, cool. Like, that'll be cute for like six weeks and you'll burn out on it and you're not going to get better at anything. And you'll reach a ceiling and it'll be stuff like that. So like, yeah. if you see like a workout, like that has like burpee, like I, burpees, like I just don't think are, I've done, t uh, we've done a shitload of burpees, burpee, broad jumps, burpees and Spartan races, burpees and high rocks, burpees and workouts, burpees over the bar and CrossFit, done a shitload of burpees, right? For a golfer, I really don't see the point of a burpee. Um, it, it's like, cause if you're doing it fast, right? Like you're supposed to, like, you gotta drop to the floor pretty hard. You're supposed to flop to the ground. And, um, you know, a golfers, like I find it to be really painful on the, like it can bang up your wrists, yeah. right? Make your wrists a little sore. If you're dropping to the ground, like kind of fast and usually you don't just do two burpees, you do several burpees. Yeah, it's a fatigue. Um, yeah. yeah. And so like that just bangs up your wrist a little too much. I just don't really see the point of doing a bunch of burpees. Yep. Um, so we, that's, you know, that's a telltale sign of, of, of a CrossFit workout right there is if it has a burpee in it. Um, I just don't, I don't, I don't see the point in that. So yeah, that, that, I don't know why that bothers me so much that I just see these cause it's, it's also, it also lacks creativity and you're just, all you're doing is like all of a sudden and, if, and it'd be the same thing if they tend to do it with the CrossFit. It's like not bodybuilding. Like people aren't taking bodybuilding workouts and being like, hey, chest day, back day, arm day, leg day. Here's your golf specific bodybuilding workout like that. That's not out there. It's, it's CrossFit that they're that they're pulling it from. Um, so I don't know. I don't know why they do that, but they do it. I don't know either. I don't know. I that's it's it's out there. I'm trying to think of like a theory of why I think it's out there. I think, again, it's back to just that's what people like. That's what people like. Yeah. People like the whole, it sells. it's hard. It's it sells. hard. I'm sweating. This kills There's me. billion they dollar industry of that. that out there. Yeah. You know, so I get it, but um, then the, I don't get it. The, you know, you like to post no rest days like that. That culture yeah. is still out there a little bit. Like we're a, a little bit removed from that. We had our face of that, but like, yeah, it's, it's wild. It's totally wild to me. Like just out again, outsiders, non golf trainers perspective. It's just more like the stimulus, like, nowhere in golf are you doing a 10 minute explosive fucking there's just that doesn't apply ever right. breathless like yeah. <laughs> oh fatigue i'm like no we talked about that we kind of thought we talked about doing that by the way we talked about like it'd be kind of cool to add a fitness like an yeah. extra fitness component to golf oh yeah because we were talking about how like you know i mean i mean i i you know i'm 36 years old in great shape and i could lose and like i'm, I'm playing this match play like and my next opponent could be a 75 year old guy who can barely walk and he could kick my ass. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. and, it, and it won't be shocking. Yes. Um, but yeah, if we added in like, Hey, we got to do yes. X amount. It's we got to, we got to do something. Yeah. We got to do some fitness anything. thing before this. Like, I, yeah. I then just, just want to be like, can we just run for like <laughs> two minutes before every hole? Like, cause then yeah. I'll maybe have a chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be a game I, of my attrition. Ego is bruised every time I play golf. Yeah. But if we add like a push up contest or something beforehand, yeah. I'll definitely win. <laughs> like if we got to do pull ups and like do this and do that. Like before each shot, like we got to put a weight in the back of your golf cart. Then we got to like do yeah, this yeah, or yeah. that. Put like, a put a <laughs> yeah. If we can make this much more athletic, and who knows, like things evolve, like who knows what, who knows what will be around in 20 years. That's like maybe funny. we'll be doing like a Spartan golf course. That would be wild. I do want to like also though say, and, I, and I've said this before, golf is hard and like is athletic and it does take a right. lot out of you and like playing for four hours is fucking hard. So like, Just I not do that way. think that golfs are athletes, but yeah, like, so to your point, like the golf specific workouts that are CrossFit, like I'm like just doesn't apply at all that's yeah. back to where i'm like cool you're better off walking for 90 minutes like doing a nice or a ruck even like a 20 pound 15 pound ruck walk you know right. just getting used to having weight on your back and just grinding it out steady state zone two zone three like mm -hmm. i don't know just not crossfit ever like yeah. you do not have to touch a crossfit workout to be a golf athlete no period i mean and i and i put like, you know, like if, if you see my Saturday conditioning workout, which, um, if anyone wants to check it out, like under on train heroics page, you can see like a, a sample of my workouts on there. Um, I do put in like what, what I'm talking about is like, if you see like my Saturday workout, one of the blocks in there is crossfitty. I put that in air quotes, like, because it starts out with a row. It's only one minute to get your heart rate up. And then you've got like three or four movements to do that are like, a, a deadlift or um and then i'll do like a rotation i'll do some kind of core move or you know it's it's always upper body lower body core um and then um you know a cardio 
like, yeah. a, like a rower or skier or a bike or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and that would be, that's the closest I get to it. Now, if you see like someone doing like 10 rounds of something, like I wouldn't like that's to me is too much. Right. Especially if it's like, unless it's like 10 rounds of two reps of something, like I just don't see a need for a golfer to do like 10 rounds of 20 reps of something like a, like a lunge. I don't know. That's just a lot of volume. And, well, and I just again, don't see it wears that. you down. And then like the other side of that is like, not only if just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Cause then it's like, you get out on the golf course and it's like, well, if I do a lot of burpees and I haven't in, in a while, or just in general, if you do 150 burpees, whatever, 50 burpees, 20 burpees, your chest is sore. Like mm-hmm. your back, your shoulders are sore. Then you're like, you're like genuinely just kind of fucked up. And then your golf game probably isn't going to be so good if you're if you're f- very fatigued and just really yeah. sore and feeling crappy. I mean, when I, you know, last summer when I trained for CrossFit and to do some competitions and things like that, my golf game was super shitty. Yeah. Um, and now I mean, you know, my, I'm not playing my absolute best, but I just got to fine tune some things. But I mean, yesterday I was going to shoot in the seventies. Yeah. And you feel good. I think that's another part. I mean, of it, yesterday, right? you know, score th- is one thing, but you're also feeling pretty good on the. Yeah. Golf. I was, I mean, I was going to break 80 yesterday. Yeah. We were um, on. we're on the 15th hole and we I was, and I was only, um, I think I was like five over on like yeah. the 15th hole. So, I mean, I was, I was going to, um, it's, it's, it turned a corner yesterday. So, I mean, but yeah, if I had done like Fran the day before, like, no, no, we Fran's a CrossFit workout, but, um, I would have been wrecked. We would have been wrecked. So, I mean, I, you know, sadly I, I, I could go on and on about like exercises not to do. Um, I don't want to sit here and like beat, kick that drum too much, but, um, you know, I, I, I did, I made this tweet not too long ago and I got some people that replied to it. Like there was people like, there are no stupid exercises, right? That used to be a saying. I think it might, maybe it still is a saying that saying should die because now that I've been on social media a lot, like I've spent a lot of time on social media, building on, building a brand and consuming other people's content and things like that. I can say for a fact, there are a shitload of dumb exercises that you should never do. That's right. They're just bullshit. Like they're just totally off the wall. Like, I mean, I know flow is like a popular thing, like where you get your kettlebell and you flow it all around and you do this and stuff like that. And if you like to dance and if you like getting into like some, a vibe and a mood and stuff like that, good for you. Um, but like, you know, if you're just doing these asinine, like 50 different things in a row, um, and it's a flow and you got to learn like choreography to do it. Like, um, you know, it's like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. That one might not be for you. And again, <laughs> and again, th- there is a component and I think we'll close out like just saying this, there's a component to exercise to remember that it's meant to be enjoyed. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's, if, if that's what you're after and you're chasing the, like, I just want to move my body and have fun, then that's where like some of these movements then like, like have at it. If you're not hurting yourself, yeah. if you're not like putting yourself in danger, yeah. Like it, if that's and, cool and that's what gets you up and moving and you want to flow with your kettlebell, like good for you. Like I mean, go do that. Like, yeah. Let, let me like kind of rephrase that, I guess, because if, if you enjoy that and you find happiness in that and it, and it will help you get in shape, go for it. But it's like, it's not, it's not the flow ones. It's like, try this belly fat shredder, like f- high intensity for three minutes of 20 different movements. Right. right. That's what I don't like. Right. You know, yeah, if if you want to get your mace or your kettlebell and like play some music and like really get into it, go for it. Right. But that's not, uh, if you're a golfer and you do that, let me know because I haven't haven't seen a golfer do that yet. (laughs) (laughs) Like just saying. No, this was a fun discussion. I mean, hopefully everyone kind of enjoyed our banter today. We went a little off the rails, which I think is fun. Um, Just talking about our own golf journeys out loud. Um, Yours is a little bit more interesting than mine, of course, but I don't know. I, I, w- I kind of, if you got a little more serious with it, we could, uh, I mean the, the married couples ch- club championship. I mean, you're you know. like that parent. That's like, I wish my kid liked to play this sport bet more <laughs> living by it's, it's, it's a double edged sword for me because you know, then, then that means, you know, I don't, I have to, we have to go play golf together all the time. If, okay. First of all, which you I love that, it. but you, you like know, there's, there's, there's sometimes, you know, like, you know, <laughs> I like to go do my thing. And you do. You have your men's league. I don't go to that. I don't participate yeah, in that. It's, well, because it's men's league and you're, Good for you. and you're not, I am not and men's. you're not men's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, with that, I am not men's. That's a wrap. That's super fun. Have good push ups, everybody, and great pull ups. Do not do compound um, exercises that are made up on the Instagrams. And Find us on Instagrams, obviously. I'm always at Erica Elko on the Instagrams and Cody as Cody Westcott Golf. 
What else do we have to say? You guys know. Oh, where to find uh, us. our our programs um, almost in. I want to say like we're you know we've had a good couple of days, so like I think we're getting close to a hundred subscribers. We're very close. It's been very cool to see. Yeah, so it's not we even at we're it's guys. not even been a month yet, and we're at almost a hundred subscribers. So everyone that's listening, that's um, doing our doing the workouts, and I've I've had great feedback. Yeah. Um, so we're really excited. It's been it's been fun. Yeah, it has been fun. And we're, we're excited keep to keep growing and keep going. Yeah, for sure. And um, Squat says hi to everybody too. We appreciate. We appreciate his presence. Do we? But he might be banned. With that, guys, we'll see you soon. And we're out. Bye.